Hey everybody, David Peterson here. This is um, a short video of Nyankunde, MAF base in Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo. So what you're looking at right now is the airstrip. Um, it's going down the way you take off. You can see the mountains in the background. I'm gonna pan slowly to the right here. The way you'd arrive here, like we did two weeks ago, you'd fly in here from Bunya, the port of entry which is only a few minutes away by plane. And you first see is the MAF hangar here. And uh, on the left, I'm gonna start walking, we'll have a little walking, talking tour. On the left, up here we have the first plane that MAF East DRC has, which is a short caravan. It's the oldest caravan that MAF owns. It has over 20,000 hours on it. So, it's an old plane, but it's really good. And I'll stop here and get a better close-up. There you go. Short caravan. Here's the hangar. I can do a little tour of that later after I get the doors open. Um, if the planes aren't in the hangar right now. There's a bunch of uh, work going on and some trucks and stuff in there. This building here beside the hangar is a smaller tea hangar. But again, right now it's used for storing wood, where they're um, they're drying out the wood, and they have a little carpentry shop in there. They're using that to uh, rebuild the houses here that were destroyed in the war. The plane here on the right is the really new caravan. That's the one that I was able to work on when it was going through MAF headquarters in Nampa. Uh, it's a grand caravan, much longer. Uh, the building behind the grand caravan there is the office building where you have a little pilot lounge, some flight planning stuff, and a few other things. Looks like a bug just landed on the screen. <laughs> a lot of bugs here. All right, panning over here to the right, you see the 206, the same plane I flew at Moody, actually. Well, not the exact plane, but the same model. Uh, the ones I flew during standardization were a little different. They were turbocharged. So this is the plane I'm gonna be starting in here this next week, or the week after. Uh, it's a uh, MAF's used to a sixes for a very long time. All right, so here again was the airstrip coming up, and this first house here is the Martins, Joey and Kathleen Martin, who are one of the families that's here right now on the on the team. They've been they've been in East Congo for a while now. The house to the left here is actually a schoolhouse, which is still under construction, and the Martins share that water tower with the schoolhouse. All right, let me get back around the 206. If I walk around here, you see the next house after the schoolhouse. So there's the schoolhouse, there's Martin's. The third one there is our house. And uh, right now the fence is going up. They're doing pretty good work as a bamboo fence. They've been working on it now for I don't know, a week, week and a half. They're doing a great job. So I'll just walk over and show you inside the house. Here's a tree in front of our house, which I don't know if you can see the flowers and things on it. It's a really pretty tree with big old flowers. Really nice. All right, so before I go into the house, I'll show you down the rest of the row here. So you have, that's our house right there on the right. And then right there is where the Hensons are gonna live. The Hensons are gonna arrive in uh, about two months. And then down at the end there is um, the Harkonnens house. They're on furlough. They'll be back in uh, a couple months as well. And then it's kind of an L shape. So you turn the corner and down there is uh, the Jacobsons. Dave and Donna Jacobson. They're very been on with MF for a long time. A lot of experience here in East DRC. Lived here in Yinkunde for a long time too. And now uh, you can see around the side of the containers. These containers here are just for storage. Have a bunch of plain stuff and other things in them. That right there is a little guard house. That's where the, the night guards and the day guards hang out. Also an outhouse for the workers too. Kind of a brush pile, they have fires there at night. 
There's the bamboo that they brought in. I don't know if you saw the picture that we had on Facebook. Bring it in all on a trailer hanging off the back. Chop it up and make this awesome fence. All right, so here in the middle of the courtyard, so there's the containers again. Middle of the courtyard, have this pagoda or whatever you want to call it. The grass roof and just kind of some posts holding it up. And here twice a week, some ladies will come down and sell vegetables, which is kind of nice. And that right there is the Stritzel's house, the last house here. There's actually a couple houses down the runway, but they haven't been rebuilt yet. So up the hill, there's also the CAD's place, John and Cher CAD, the program manager. So they don't live down here on the airstrip. All right, so if I pan back to the left, you can see over here the other side of the office building. Got a guard over there under the tree. All right, so that's the office building, the front of it. I won't bother to go in there, it's not too exciting. That right there is the door to the wood shop, which is on the side. Again, I'll go show you in the hangar after we're done uh, at our house. Let me just walk over the fence so I can show you the backyard from here. All right, so you can see a good angle in the backyard. Here's our fence, there's a nice flower line. Here Bahati, our uh, hired hired guy that uh, we pay to, to help out. He's digging up the, the yard here. This whole section here along the back is gonna be a garden. That back fence area is gonna be made into a fence like this. They're gonna be working on that starting tomorrow, I think. So here in the middle of our backyard is our water tower. Down there is a storage room under the water tower, really nice. You can keep generator and gas and things like that in it. Big old tank up there. The tank is fed by uh, rainwater off the house as well as uh, a spring um, up on the hill behind us. So you don't really have to worry about too much water. You got a cistern there um, to, to store water in and then uh, the gen when the generator turns on it pumps water up into the tower, gravity feed into the house, you have great running water. It's really nice. Alright, so that's kind of the backyard. You got some flowering trees here, some more dug up space in the garden, some more plants. And along the side there, that's kind of our back porch area. It's nice, uh, we'll probably make an outdoor uh, kitchen there in a bit. Lots of projects, not enough time to do them. <laughs> just kidding. Really, we just need a vehicle to be able to go get supplies and we'll be able to start working on the kitchen and stuff. And uh, I think you probably have already heard, we already bought a vehicle in Uganda. Actually, the day we showed up, we bought it off a missionary who was just leaving. So thanks to all of you who contributed and helped us, helped us with the vehicle fund over a year ago and being able to uh, purchase that vehicle. It's a nice Toyota Land Cruiser. All right, so here's kind of the side of the house, more flowers. Right here is going to be a gate. I haven't put the gate in yet, obviously. Some more plants here around the front. Front porch, steps to the house. Kind of the front yard here. Schoolhouse again, Martin's down there. Nice ring of flowers here again, around the front. We really like it. They did a great job landscaping. All right, did a full loop there. Hope you're not getting dizzy. <laughs> There again is a, on the right of the house, there's a big old flower bed here, and there's the rest of the fence going to the backyard. Gonna be another gate there. More flowers on the side. There's the front door. I'll go in in a second and show you the side yard. Okay, go through the gate here. And here we have the other side yard. Be quiet, Daniel's sleeping in the room right here. That's Daniel's room. I won't be able to show you in there. He's taking a nap. All right, fence. Still doing a great job on the fence. More flowers, flowering tree. Little corner here. These little, these little plants right here that Ashley just planted are moringa. It's a really cool tree that has really nutritious leaves that she researched, and it's growing great. So, all right, this is a papaya tree that just got transplanted. It's starting to grow again. It's nice. Here we got. Big old banana tree, another banana tree. Here's the side of the house on the back. That's uh, Daniel's bedroom, our bedroom. Some pipes coming in for water for the bathroom in our bedroom from the water tower. Flowers, some cut up bamboo I just cut up to make a compost. 
uh, bin system, and right now we're putting compost in an action packer. <laughs> this here beside these banana trees is a bigger papaya tree. It's a male papaya tree. You have males and females. You can see the flowers on it right there. It means it's male. There's no fruit. Back here is a kind of a brush area. We don't know who owns it. We heard that the guy that owns it had to flee in the war and hasn't came back. We were hoping to rent the rent a little bit of that land and um, maybe Ashley can have goats there. So that's kind of the, the long-term plan, but we'll see if we can figure out um, whose, whose land that is. Actually, that looks like tomatoes, kind of interesting. On this tree, I don't know if you can really see, there's a vine. Let's see if I can show you the fruit. And that right there is passion fruit. So we got a passion fruit vine right behind the house. Super cool. <laughs> kind of fun. There's also more passion fruit over there. Along the fence line, I'll show you this uh, big papaya tree. So our papaya trees. We have another, this is another papaya tree right there, another one right there, and then a big one there in the corner. And then if I pan, there's a garden again, backyard, water tower. Here's another papaya tree. Another little one right there too. Flowering bush. Here's a female papaya tree. See, it's got the papaya starting to grow on it and some flowers. That's how you tell the difference. I'll pan back around and show you the full grown papaya tree back here if you've never seen one. Alright so there's a full grown papaya tree in the back kind of in the brush. You can see its leaves right there. It's got the big old fruit hanging off of it. Alright so anyway that's kind of the backyard area. And the water tower. Here's the how the rain comes off the roof. It's collected into this cistern area. Collection thing goes down to the cistern, pumps back up. That's lemongrass. Make really good tea out of it. Some cool plants here, planted beside the back. Here's our porch. So we're gonna have a ton of space here to have an outdoor kitchen. Be really nice. I don't know if you heard of a rocket stove, but you can use sticks, little sticks, and here's a ton of wood. So just use little sticks and you can actually uh, cook um, cook with a lot less uh, wood. We right now cook on gas and the gas bottles are flown in on the plane and that costs uh, about 60 bucks a bottle. So a little bit expensive so kind of excited to have a wood burning stove soon. Alright, actually let's go in the front door. It'd be more fun to see the front first. Here's the other side yard walking around. Right there is a uh, there's some um, power power lines coming in. So we have um, we have electrical from a generator in the hangar, as well as solar panels and a big battery system over in the hangar. So really is a really good power system set up. People here have done a great job setting it up. All right, so go in the front door, and this is our living room. Some mess from the baby. Here's Ashley sitting there blogging for your ability to see things so <laughs> um, the, for a lot of the furniture in here right now is kind of loner furniture and we're in the process of having some made so that'll take a little while and also Ashley's in the middle of making curtains to replace the ones on here camera can't adjust real well there sorry about that all right this is where Daniel plays during the day the floor is concrete but it's got a real cool pattern on it so it's kind of fun Here's uh, juice uh, just to the right. I almost said juice to the right. A mix of French and English, kind of funny. Uh, here's a ma mahogany door. Mahogany is the cheapest uh, hardwood you can get readily available. So most things are mahogany in the house, the wood things. Some action packers here from unpacking. This is the office. Got a joystick there. Been doing a little bit of flight training on a simulator. You can see over there out at the schoolhouse. Okay, so office. Come back out here in the living room. And make a right down here the nice hallway we got the HF radio so each house has an HF radio and you can communicate between the MAF houses and um, the planes also have HF radio so really nice for keeping in touch and helps with security situation too all right so here's the I don't know if you call it a master bathroom or what but big old shelf there and it's got a bathtub run the generator get some hot water the hot water heater turns on when the generator is on, so that's kind of nice. Mahogany again, <laughs> pretty. There's me. I want to see myself. Hello.
<laughs> um, we got a regular old flush toilet, really nice actually. Pretty new stuff because all the houses were just rebuilt from being destroyed in the war, so the stuff in here is pretty new. Here's another bedroom, spare bedroom. We got some storage in there. So if you come and see us, hint, 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 then you can stay here. <laughs> Again, that's Daniel's room in the end, coming around here. Then you have our room, so nice and messy. You can tell we make our bed, it's really nice. <laughs> so we got our luggage stored up there and clothes and um, back around in our, our room. We have a, another bathroom, so that's really nice with a little walk-in shower and yeah it's really a nice setup so we're really blessed to to be with a mission like a myth that provides really cool places to stay and you can really feel like you can relax and um, yeah just have a enjoyable enjoyable time when you're not working big old chest there that we have to have our own made here's a, a table we bought we actually bought this from another missionary before we even arrived so that was kind of crazy but it's been nice. Here's a, our first decor that we got. It's a little little uh, piece of bone with um, monkeys and stuff carved into it. And um, this is um, yeah, it's a little rhino. And up here we've got uh, oh, you can see him. It's our first pet. <laughs> yeah, here, where are you? There you are. All right, there he is. So he's a chameleon. So he's pretty. He's pretty cool. <laughs> All right. So we set some branches up. I'm sure the Congolese are gonna think we're crazy keeping chameleons in our house, but that's okay. All right. So coming around here is Ashley's favorite room, the kitchen. So we got all mahogany cupboards. As I said, mahogany is the cheapest wood you can buy here. Big old cupboards up to the top. And we've got a whole bunch of fruit. There's mangoes, some passion fruit. That one came off the vine behind the house. There's a pumpkin there, some limes, onions, bananas. It's a kind of yam you can get, some garlic, potatoes, tomatoes. Anyway, um, for doing your fruit, you have to bleach, bleach the fruit in water. A little bit of bleach in water to make sure it's safe. So we bleach it and then we put it over there. There's the gigantic pressure cooker canner thing that we got for Ashley. So she's already canned a few things. I'll show you the pantry here in a second. That's our milk pot. We got milk delivery to the house actually every day other than Sundays, which is pretty crazy. So we're pretty excited about that. So fresh milk, but you have to pasteurize it in that. So Ashley's been working on pasteurization and stuff and we're doing a good job. There we got a nice fridge. It runs off of the solar panel and battery system turns off at night a couple pineapples here's all the fruit that we uh, eggplant there too so we set fruit here and vegetables and then we bleach them and then put them over the other side alright you can see we haven't done a lot of dishes today <laughs> and uh, here's the back door and back here we actually have a wash machine which is really nice so we got running water from the water tower Fed from the stream and the roof goes into the wash machine and then power from the generator and the solar panels and you can actually do clothes like that but you have to dry them outside on a line uh, not enough power for dryers um, so anyway we dry them outside and then you have to wait 36 hours so mango flies aren't in them mango flies are bugs that can get in your skin so it's kind of gross what i'm showing you here is a filter that's not our filter we're going to be able to put ours up in a couple days it's um Ours is a Sawyer filter, but you have to filter all your drinking water. Uh, so you have to keep ahead of that. Come into this dark room. There we go. Light on. There's the pantry. A whole bunch of gadgets up there. You got a Roma food mill for doing tomatoes. That's a um, actual grain mill, hand crank grain mill for doing grain. A yogurt maker, a pasta maker. That's part of the um, part of the milk's cream separator. Here's the rest of it on the ground. So you put the milk in there and you go crank, 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 and out comes cream on one side and one or two or skim milk, whatever you want. On the other, you set it to however, what kind of milk you like. So it's pretty cool. Here's a water heater. The water heater, like I said, turns on when the generator's on so we can have some hot water for showers. That's a whole slew of canning jars. Ashley's pretty excited about getting canning going. She's already canned up 
two things. Here we have tomato sauce and stock made out of chicken bones. So, yeah, here's all the spices and here's the two gas bombs that feed the stove through the wall there. Like I said, those are kind of pricey, so we're hoping to get our outdoor kitchen made up soon. Yeah, so anyway, there's the back door. I already showed you everything out the back. And so now I'm going to pause the video, and we'll be back up in a second after I've got over to the hangar and opened the doors. So say goodbye to Ashley for now. <laughs> All right. All right, so we're back. Uh, that's showing down the airstrip again beside the hangar. Like I said, here's the little tea hangar. They have a uh, wood stored in there right now, drying to make make stuff for the houses. The wood shop's right there. A couple trailers for getting bamboo and wood and bricks and whatever. The newer caravan over there. Here's a closer picture of the older caravan. Some old containers. Container over there. It's a structure for the hangar door. Big old doors. Alright, so we'll walk in here to the hangar. Hopefully it's not too dark. Alright, so over here to the right, we got a whole bunch of ladders and uh see we got a press in the back there. A mower, compressor, barrel with hand pump. Just the big mower that goes on the tractor over there, the nice new Holland tractor they got on a container recently. And there's a little mower here for around the houses, which is nice. They used to actually mow the entire airstrip using machetes. It would take forever. By the time you get done with one end, it already grew too high at the other end. But tractors are nice. There's a dirt bike. One of the guys got a bunch of tools back there and grinder, another bike, some workspace, drill press. Here's some more wood drying out. These are the kind of boards they use on our ceiling in the house. And over here we got a upper room above, which has a bunch of hardware and stuff in it. And a room here down below, which has a bunch more tools and oxyacetylene welding system, really nice. Um, yeah, so you got a couple toolboxes stored under there. Workbench. Here's the uh, here's the arc welder they have. You got a 225 welder, stick welder, which is nice. And um, here you got the main power bus switch for the generator to turn the generator on to charge the batteries and powerhouses. Got another room up here to the left and down below as well. Got a bathroom and sink area down there. Here's the rest of the power system indicating different things going on with that. And inside here are a whole bunch of batteries. See if the door's open. Yeah, there we go. So, there you go. All of these batteries all stuck in a row, all hooked together. Can't really see in there. I don't think there's enough light in here. Not on. All right, so anyway, that whole room is filled with batteries. That's what allows us to have power all the time. Here's my toolbox crate. I probably remember a long time ago seeing a picture of it hanging from a tree in Illinois with my toolbox in it. It arrived just fine. There it is. Back on wheels here in Congo. It's amazing our connected world today. There's uh, three different cars. The Land Cruisers here were donated by, I think it was Medair that donated them. Now that one needs a bunch of work, I guess. I'm hoping maybe I can help with that. It's a Toyota Hilux here, which is used for work around here a lot. There's a, that's the bathroom here in the hangar, sink, and more storage. Here's a container. They have containers um, bumped up against the hangar, and then they just cut out a hole. And you can uh, have it as another big storage area. So this one is chock full of plastic piping that they use in the houses, and metal piping, and stuff like that. Pile of sand over there in the hangar. The, the national workers have... Um, Devotions here every morning, which is really cool. And we also have some parties in here. We just had a party for a couple guys that had babies. Uh, it was really fun. Uh, Etienne and Grégoire were the two guys. They had just had a new baby, so we had a party for them. There's one of the land cruisers, one that needed work. The front end of them. Hilux again. Another land cruiser. 
that one's uh, working just fine, which is really nice. All right, so that is the hanger. And I think that's about it. There's a, just a quick pan of what you see outside around again. An old caravan. She could see the scenery better from here. It's a really beautiful place. All right, well, that's it for now. I'll have to post more videos later. But um, thanks again to all you guys who helped us uh, over the nine years of training that it took to get here. We're just really excited to be here and to start flying soon in the next week. It's amazing how much um, participation for everybody it took to get here. So thanks for your prayers, for your giving, for your heart, for the Lord, and for missions. And we look forward to years of service with you. See you later. Bye.